Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a new episode of Solo Nilfil, but today it's going to be Advantage Edition. Right away, the background is going to show my failed attempts. This episode took me like twice or if not three times longer than normal to record. We're going to approach this episode a tad differently, but don't worry, I'm going to time step everything, just kind of switching up the order just a little bit. The structure will go, I'm going to give tips about the matchmaking of season 14, then review a win that I had solo and commentate over it, then wrap up with two rounds of commentary showcasing raw and authentically what actually happens. One where I hot drop and one where I land safer. Let's circle back. So depending on the day, duos and trios are going to be a lot more difficult. I found that duos can be sweatier as they normally have teammates communicating way more effectively. So when you think about not having your third, you may actually just queue into duos, ensuring that you have a teammate you can come with. Trios in that situation will be easier, but if you play and you notice a ton of three stacking, then duos is honestly just going to be the easier way to go. It's pretty much what I started doing, just because I found a lot of people were triple stacking really effectively too. I noticed as of the season, and my theories are, they want to stack because of the Apex Legends pack XP bonus. Number two, lobbies are sweaty, so they're trying to combat it by also three stacking. Or three, the ranked squads are just playing more pubs because they don't want to play ranked because it's a lot more difficult. I've been training to improve my gameplay with Vantage, but the issue I'm running into is that up until Diamond, pubs is honestly way more difficult. In fact, some lobbies I swear have the same amount of Masters and Pred players as a Diamond lobby. I know, it's kind of crazy, but this has everything to do with the time of day that you play, your own MMR, and I guess just luck. How has your luck been? This is the one question I'm going to ask all of you, and it's probably the most important to comment down below, especially for this guide. Be honest. What is going on with the matchmaking? Is it as aggressive as I'm seeing, especially for the solo no-fill guide? Are you also having just as much trouble? Are people just not solo no-filling as much anymore? Or even the people that are solo no-filling, are you also just as sweaty as probably the other teams? Something is going on and something has changed, but it could also just be our luck, right? Just comment down below. I kind of want to know. I think the bigger pull and responses I get, the better we can also understand this. Now with that, usually these episodes I record on my lunch break and they take about an hour and a half to do. And I can do them on my lunch break effectively because of that. But the third parties, as you can tell from the footage, are so fast. I've been showcasing whenever I lose over and over and sometimes I get a gun, sometimes I don't. I found either I got pushed and, and got aggressively involved or I had like no fun just routing out a placement. Teams have gotten really smart and really quick. It doesn't help either that other vantages can tell if you are solo. It makes it more difficult. Sears pick rate is higher, so it makes it even harder to rat and Bloodhound is also still really strong. So here's some quick tips before I get into the win. Duck and weave and don't get too greedy even though you may be able to confidently take a 1v3. Third parties just show up really, really fast this season. Could be because of King's Canyon, but they, it's pretty insane how fast they show up. Loot quickly. Rotate to zone. Zone closures are getting caught out. Just really suck. People are fighting outside of the zone a lot, and it's a great way to gate some fights. And you kind of see that with my win. If you cannot confidently win your ones, you got to train your aim. A lot of people seem like they've gotten better at winning their ones recently, and it's pretty insane. I think it could be the weapon meta. That also could be a change. And of course, the last one here loadout is everything. I'm going to put down in the description down below my preferred loadout for Vantage. I pretty much typed out what I would put in a primary slot and a secondary slot. I find that I now play Vantage aggressively without a sniper. I pretty much rely on the fact that I pray I can land my shots because it's easier to do because the bullet velocity is higher and there's less bullet drop. Now when I play Horizon and Watson, I will grab a sniper. But with Vantage, she has to be in the face of the team and really act like a Walmart version of Pathfinder. But she has the ability to create a strong opening. So I've been trying to play on that fact a lot more recently, especially so I don't get caught out, get stand too far behind, I guess, teammates and I'm really in the thick of it. Otherwise, what happens is that you may land your shots with a longbow confidently or sentinel, and then you just don't use your ult, and you just have to always default in your ult. It puts a lot of pressure, unfortunately, if you miss your shots with your ult, but you gotta practice it. Go in the test range and just shoot the ultimate over and over again. It could be probably the biggest difference between a good vantage and one that just isn't as strong. I think she may still get a nerf, possibly to her tactical, or maybe reduce the damage of the ult, maybe by like 10, so somebody with a white armor can, I guess, effectively survive, but that's beside the point let me know down below as well do you think vantage needs a nerf i think she's pretty balanced to be honest just because even though she's got a high pick rate it's not a high pick rate when it comes to diamond plus i think she sits pretty pretty stable i think a lot of casuals play her sitting far back and don't know how to play her aggressively my opinion though now let's break down a win and let's keep on with the video all right let's break down a win as solo no fill vantage so I try to land hot and I still run my trail. So if you have a trail, whether it's diamond or master, sometimes I recommend actually taking it off because you can't be the focus of some people dropping. They might think it's a content creator, what have you. I had a team drop on me. Luckily I was able to get out. They managed to get a gun 
And the reason why I back out of this so fast once I get the armor swap is because I know that the team was nearby. I have a big issue in terms of the hot drops as of late from the lobbies. They've been really confusing. Sometimes Relic will be hot. Sometimes it'll be Cascades. It could be the north side of the map. It, the, the hot drop seems to move all over the place depending on your lobby and also the time of day. It's really confusing. Sometimes they'll wait on the ship and as the current one, as you'll see, they really didn't. And right now I do hear shots in a little bit and I decide to go push this. Now I decided to start playing by this point vantage very, very aggressively. I decided that the best play was actually just to get involved because if I hung out in the back, they either would have a seer, they would have vantage, they would know that I was solo. So the best tactic that I found was just really getting into the thick of it. You'll see in a moment when I get into encounter the downside of that. Now this was recorded during a lunch break, so why I don't have the audio in the background is because I was listening in on a meeting. So I have that audio muted. Now that could mean why the matchmaking was a lot more aggressive because a lot of casuals, because school is back in session for a lot of people. And of course a lot of people have returned to work. So the people that are playing maybe younger who aren't going to school or perhaps are finished with school, maybe their break is a lot different. Maybe they are currently transitioning between jobs or maybe Apex Legends is a job. Now makes it very interesting because the current players that are playing are a lot more sweaty. So this team definitely mopped up as fast as possible, So, but I realized that they got knocks on both ends. So I shoved this like a Pathfinder and I just run right up on it. You have to be very confident to win your ones. If I got here even a second sooner, she probably wouldn't have gotten that swap. And I almost lost this fight, to be honest. Even if she punched me, she probably wasn't going to get that. But it, nonetheless, you, you see how fast I had to push that to really capitalize on it. But now I have all this loot in front of me and Another tip, and you'll see me put away Echo in just a moment, I put Echo away quite a bit when I'm solo no-filling, is because it looks like a big beacon. And you know, remember the rule that they're within 40 meters. So I got shot immediately here, and I decide to, I don't think I got shot actually, I apologize. That was a different clip. But I do know that there's teams nearby, and you do notice that I duck and weave consistently, but I'm trying to get as much loot as humanly possible. So this is duos, just as a reminder of what you're seeing here and in the footage. Now remember my other tip was to rotate as much as humanly possible. I think staying near zone is going to be ideal just because getting caught out of zone, if you find anybody else outside of the zone in any way, shape or form, and I kind of stutter and stammer as I talk about it, just because like literally it's so fast and teams that get greedy outside the zone, I swear the zone hurts more than other teams just blatantly and you can catch out a lot of people that are going to rotate late because then they have to battle the zone themselves so i'm heading over to the high point here i think it's important to get positioning and be able to gate effectively and i do consistently scan using my not my ult because the ult definitely whenever you scan it has a bright laser i hold echo a lot because it's really really loud especially in solo no fill but again the, it, I, I can't constantly remind put away echo because it looks like a giant crypto drone and they know that you're 40 meters and i know i hit that tip already and I'm reminding again because i see a lot of echoes do it or excuse me a lot of vantages do it and it causes a lot of problems now the reason why i immediately take a shot here is because i know this team is already getting involved and i completely wipe them and there that's some free kills right there now that's the beauty of running vantage uh, her ultimate is really, really strong. Default on always her ultimate rather than using your sniper first. So I'm constantly scanning here. And because it's duos, you can do a lot of damage. You can grief a lot of teams to get yourself the advantage. Now, even if there is a knock, a lot of people, if you want to counter advantage, especially if you get knocked, you got to put your knock up shield immediately. Because keep in mind, if you have a mark on you and they hit you, they'll hit you for 100 damage. And that 100 damage will complete the knock on you. So that's another tip if you want to counter advantage for solo no fill just a little tip so right now i believe i end this game with nine kills and probably around 2500 damage it's not like as you can tell i didn't stand still the problem why i don't stand still if i take a shot i know that teams are nearby it's king's canyon and i pretty much just kind of float within the zone even if there's a team that's like ratting or even hunkered down in a building i know i should be able to kind of rotate and fly around them as much as possible so i found the most success doing this specifically on King's Canyon. If you're doing World's Edge, I guess you can drop streamer building and just be in the thick of it and just try to get as many kills as possible. Just like you would, let's say, Fade. I know, you know, everyone asks, do I know Lamech? Lamech does it very well in streamer building, and I see a lot of others really dominate streamer building as a whole. It's very, very effective. That's where you want to go because it's safe, you can get out. Vantage has not as strong of ability within streamer building. I still need to practice her within that building specifically, but I think she has the ability because then she can get out of the fight whenever she needs to. I rarely kind of hold though. 
I don't necessarily just hold an ankle. I kind of wait to see if I can hear a fight, which I believe I hear a fight that's kind of in front of me, and I look around for as much as humanly possible to get involved in. The more I can get involved in, the better, because then they won't necessarily know if I'm solo or not, and if they do find out I'm solo, then, then I'll back away with Echo and take a new location. Now, everything of her kit screams that she is there, so be very smart when you pull out your sniper and know confidently whether you're going to use it or not. Another tip I'll provide is make sure you have at least two bullets with your ultimate so you can do the follow-up shot with 100. I used to make the mistake by just using the one bullet, but hitting somebody for 50 just isn't as effective. You want to make sure you have at least two bullets at all time, carry around some ult cells if needed. I hear a fight, I hear them in here, and I'm looking for them, just FYI. There's a reason why I'm moving over here, her shots. I just don't know where they're at. I know that they're inside. And I saw that there was knocks on both ends. I'm looking at different levels because they are very, very quiet. I have also noticed this season that people have gotten pretty smart about being very quiet with their footsteps, and it's... Especially whenever you're trying to fight one of these buildings, it'd be very hard to tell if the audio is coming from above or below. So right now, I'm just kind of ratting it to see if I can catch him out of position. And I do end up getting him because I hear the jump pad that he takes. The, it ends up becoming an octane. You saw the octane in the kill feed. So I know that there was an octane. There he is. So I catch him out here and then he decides to run. And I know if he's running, then I pretty much have the jump on him and then I'm going to win the fight. So I take my last shot and I clutch it out and it was an insta kill. So therefore, I know that the octane was by themselves now the downside about this and this is where i heard the jump pad they clearly made a mistake and kind of got caught out here is the downside look look how fast the third party was look how fast they are i mean necessarily not third party me but they hear the shots and they know something's going on so they rotate it over here i tend to carry a lot more flush shields that are than needed currently within the season just in case <laughs> i i don't have any syringes so that's why i'm using a med kit here so please don't be super triggered about that that just happened to me my bad inventory management but i try to get involved here as fast as possible so you say take my shots get my knock take another shot i miss and unfortunately since i've already taken a few shots remember i got two bullets that's enough to do about 150 damage and i have to kind of gauge that and i duck and weave a lot here a lot a lot a lot so there's a team on height and there's a team be down below and i see that they're engaged i decide to rotate so when i decide to rotate and i know it's going to make a lot of noise they already know that I took some shots from this distance. If they know I took shots from this distance, I might as well take an off angle to see if I can get an angle here, essentially. That's gonna be my best bet and my best opportunity to even try to make a play. If you've already made noise, you might as well make more noise at that point. So here they are, and the team is also down below. So I take my initial shots. I don't overstay my welcome on the spray just in case they land a lot back. I probably could have stayed there a lot more with the spray, done a lot more damage, but I'm not necessarily looking for a a push here. I'm just looking to kind of grief because there is a team down below. Even if I got a knock here, I'm not going to do anything. So what I do, this is my like duck and weave tactic. So I'm, my goal is just to get the team from down below to do something. So I pop a Phoenix kit and I wait. And even if they were to push me here, they'd be push, pushing essentially in an open field, which I can pretty much see here. I notice they're not pushing and then I hear shots and I say, you know what? Screw it. I'm going right back into this fight. So this is the duck and weave factor that Vantage has because most people kind of think that Vantage is kind of gone the minute she kind of pops her Q back. That's not really the case. And kind of the beauty of running Vantage is that now I'm pretty much back in it. And I heard them fighting and I'm looking for the opportunity. And a lot of people play this really, really smart as of late. And I've been seeing this a lot more where teams are also doing exactly what I'm doing. Like they're not even hard committed to the encounter. So that was really good damage. Got red armor on him. I do have one more shot, but I'm not able to really close it out. So I take an additional shot on the Bloodhound and I miss because I kind of had glitched a little too much. This is now an additional team. So you see I was shooting a team on the right and now there's another team in front. I know a majority of the teams are right in front of me so he's trying to mop him up and trying to do a little damage but i'm also worried about the team on the right so there's not much you can do as a solo here unfortunately is just try to create an opening and try to grief as much as humanly possible that's really my goal is just kind of grief and if i want to push in i know that the team on the right i i just started playing a lot more i don't know what you call it passive aggressive it's not like i wasn't taking shots it's not that i wasn't in it it's just that a lot of teams the minute i commit onto it you'll notice that they commit onto the fight as well you might want to comment down below because that kind of goes with the skill based matchmaking are people like have you noticed how effective people are ducking and weaving because i have and i find it very interesting uh, maybe people are watching more guides and i don't necessarily get the most amount of views of my content so i mean people are just learning and it's noticeable especially as the mmr system kicks up so i have the ability to rotate here on the left and also push forward 
But this is a beauty with Vantage, again, being able to push in and out of a, of a fight. So I know that most of the teams are in front, so I'm not really letting up on this. And I'm trying to see if I can get them to actually engage with one another. I have two shots, which was my rule of two, two excuse me, and I do notice that this person is finally solo. So I actually do push on this because I think the team left. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to go in on this. And then I notice immediately on the left, I'm like, okay, yeah, focus me. Don't focus the Bloodhound that's on the left. That's perfectly fine. Focus me instead. So I at that point, I decided to try to move and rotate because I, I it just isn't worth it anymore. I, I find it crazy. It's just kind of the luck of the draw where sometimes you won't get focused. The Bloodhound is there. They're not fighting the Bloodhound for some odd reason. And then you just become the center focus. I'm like, I'm not going to let that happen. The zone closes a minute and 20. I don't want to get gated here because I have to work my way through that, that cove that you see right there on the map. And I'm looking and I'm trying to think about it consistently. I'm looking at the time that I have. Is essentially, I'll have to push through the zone, and the zone hurts, especially zone three at the moment. It hurts like zone four, essentially. That's the way I treat it. Zone one is zone two, zone two, zone three, and so forth. May not be the exact numbers or math, but I treat it as such so I remember to provide that level of respect on the zone. So I come back in, I do a pretty good amount of damage there, and I assume they found the Bloodhound. But because I wasn't able to secure enough damage, I just decided to rotate and go the way around because I got 40 seconds. I don't think I'm going to be able to knock somebody in 40 seconds because otherwise I would have one mag the Gibraltar. And then the Octane is essentially covering. And they actually don't chase me. So they don't chase me and I notice that right away. So I assume that they're just going to gate and that they're not going to take the bait. The, the idea is when you're playing, especially on outside of streamer building is you want them to bait into an open field to get one of them to make a mistake. If they're going to hold hands like you saw there, it's going to be really hard to break them up. They are now dating, essentially. People are like, that they're, oh, they're holding hands. It's really hard to get a team that is really smart to stop holding hands unless you can just get one of them to get overconfident on the push. So if they do a little damage, sometimes they will, but sometimes they'll come together and say, don't push, don't push, hold, 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 which is very clear that's what they were doing there. So try, as another tip, to guess what their comms are. You can guess most likely because what would you say in the scenario? I would never say, I would say don't get greedy on that. Let's rotate, hold them out. Let's go for the easy win. If that, that would be my comm, that's what I assume they're going to do. So I know that. So because of that, I think that they're going to gate this on the, the left. And then I notice that there is a team on my right. So that's the last team. I know they're gating in the cove and I decide just to full send it and get out. Because they're gating me thinking that I'm still there on the left. And I try to rotate as fast as humanly possible to break through. Because I know the team isn't aware that I've left yet. And the team on the right is going to continue to push me because that's what they're doing. I know you can't hear. There they go. They take the shot. And I want the other team, now that they've taken a shot, to duck and weave and go right back onto them. Because I'm not, even if I stayed for that fight, the other team from the, from the cove is just going to run right back in and then fight me. Everyone, as you can tell, was pretty competent in landing their shots, which is probably the hardest part about solo no fill, is that it have a lot of respect for the lobby. Unless you can break them up in streamer building or a POI that you can essentially break. I recommend landing a POI that you can take height and kind of juke people. The more open and flat the POI, the more difficult it's going to be. Like if you land market solo, it's going to be very difficult. But if you land, let's say, the north side of the map, it'll be easier. Or maybe octane because you can use the jump pads and move around. You uh, streamer building on on world's edge and so i got a knock here but i didn't i was hoping the other team would make a push but they didn't so that kind of sucked even if i went in and and fought that the other team is literally right there they're literally right there waiting for them and it looks like for some reason they just didn't want to push now it did work out in my favor because i, I essentially kind of waited this out waited patiently it's just a game of who's going to make a play first so i know they have two blue armors and i know the team down below this team is a bigger threat this team right here which is why i'm really trying to pick on them because they're my bigger concern. So if you're playing Vantage, use that armors and kind of read what would be a bigger concern or not. So right now I'm trying to pretend I'm going to rotate around and see if they'll engage on this fight. Which luckily they do, and I see knocks on both ends. Once I see the knocks, I have to fight. There is no ifs, ands, or buts. Once you see that, you pretty much have to go into the encounter. Now they are actually sharing that building together at the moment. Now, I don't actually hear shots, which is why I'm super confused. And once I see the res, I go for it. At that point, I know that there it's knocks on both ends and I can essentially win this. So I got one knock there. I wait, get 90 on the horizon, do a solid amount of damage there. And then I wait for the horizon. I just need one shot and there's a dub. So this has everything to do with patience and this doesn't always work out in your favor. And so when you saw the footage early on and I'll showcase raw, like I'm just going to queue up after this. 
essentially after I'm recording this, I'm going to go queue up and showcase the reality is that sometimes this just doesn't play in your favor. You can predict it. You can guess it. You can go in. Maybe you whiff. Maybe they both focus you instead because they could have just both focused me in that encounter. Or I could have taken some extra damage from the Octane. A lot of stuff could have happened here that wouldn't work in my favor. But I know this is a 1v1v1 and you have to be able to read these situations within seconds. That's the goal. This is easier on your solo no fill, depending on your MMR. This is probably the most difficult that it's going to be just because a lot of these players tend to be of high rank. And it's very clear that like who who's so fast in the bubble res below a platinum, to be honest. Like these guys clearly know what they're doing and they land their shots because I even then I almost lost, which is pretty crazy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up this portion. Let's go into the raw version of what actually happens whenever you queue up. This was a win. <laughs> You're not going to see me win <laughs> potentially when we drop hot because this like you win. You get a game like this once every like couple of hours. I'm going to be honest. And if you're really good, you'll see it maybe twice every couple of hours. And if you watch fade and you watch anybody who really drops hot for this kind of stuff, sometimes you go to the live stream and it takes a minute and and sometimes the MMR can drop. Sometimes it can go up. It's not going to be that dramatic. But sometimes you just, it, it, you have the skill, but it takes a little bit of luck. And it's not like you can't win your fights. You very clearly saw that, you know, you could win fights. You just gotta like, how much does it go in your favor? All right, guys, let's go into the raw impressions. Now in this portion of the video, what we're going to do is we're gonna drop hot. I'm gonna go to queue up now. This is gonna do duos. I've just been finding duos a lot more, I guess, viable for the most part higher level of success for now i'll probably do trios a bit later but i've been finding i was very unlucky doing most of my trios and i was running out of time i'm currently on my lunch break the next day from when i recorded the vantage footage from yesterday and this will be going up today so you'll know that this was posted probably about an hour or two later from what we're doing here you notice that the queue times are low meaning that the people who are queued up are probably going to be very very sweaty that's also a good assumption to make and we'll just kind of see how it goes. I'll try to provide as much raw, authentic tips as humanly possible. And we'll kind of go from there. Okay. Let's see what looking at. That's not too bad of a lobby, I guess. We'll see how this goes. Still, people are got to respect the lobby. You never know who's going to necessarily pop off. Always assume that everyone's going to pop off. So always, let's try to drop Book It here. The best tip I can provide is if you're going to drop Hot, assume where you're going to drop hot right away and just go right for it and the reason why is that other teams are already going to hot drop know where like the guns i know let drop here which is why i'm dropping here specifically so i got the guns let's see where they dropped looks like they gave gave me this center which is really nice but there was i think two teams here if i'm not mistaken go ahead and grab this go grab the vault and now they're fighting. So this is this is essentially kind of a hot drop. Not really. I guess uh, Rig isn't the hottest drop. So I'm trying to see what they do. They're shooting. There's a guy on the right. I'm just going to kind of hold and see if one of them will make a mistake. I don't think their armor situation is that great. But at least I have my ult. So I can zoom in and take immediate shots. If this does not clean up anytime soon, I guess capacitor could be hotter. But I just kind of went right for it. The best tip I can provide is go right for the spot that you believe that is going to be hot. So they're fighting over there and they're fighting here. I'm already in the next Alright, I'm going for it. Taking a new angle. Drop on this guy right here. And there we go. Now I back out. So that's what you call, I guess, quote unquote, a hot drop. I know that there's another team nearby shooting over on the left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way to capacitor. And just kind of essentially just duck and weave. It's not the most, I guess you call it, fascinating or interesting if you know where a gun is you land there and you go right for what you think is going to be strong i guess i could stay here i guess they're fighting a little longer oh i hear shots on maybe the left too it, it's really hard guys it, the biggest thing is that sometimes i'll go in and i think something's gonna happen and then it doesn't oh come on there we go it's another knock pretty good is that you just don't know the situation and you have to kind of read it as fast as humanly possible and that could be really difficult to do because I, I don't know if they they finish this or not and i know there's a team capacitor so i tend to just kind of duck and weave and i try to get into it. i think this is just all mopped up all right well, i'm just gonna keep moving look for more armor and need more loot we'll go fight this actually this is a quote-unquote hot job but it seems like everyone just landed sporadically all on top of each other 
and just kind of ran away. Oh, they're there. I might fight this. And it's not like I can't win these fights. I just also am... Oh, shoot. Hello. That's unfortunate. They're both up. And it's time to duck and we even get out. They may run at me. That's perfectly fine. Recharging shield. Wow, they were really quiet. That, you remember how I talked about whenever I did the no-fill that they are super quiet? I didn't hear anything. I heard no footsteps, no audio, and I know there's a team capacitor here still. So, I mean, I got blue armor, so that's a plus. I did my damage and I went right in and I saw a whole nother person. I'm not going to win if I'm wide swinging that angle. And they're the fighting. There you go. Actually, it just happened. That's This is crazy, man. I this I, I kid you not. Solo no fill has been an absolute trip as of late. I just can't recently with it. It's just Recharging like people shield. are so fast, man. It's crazy. See? Look, look at that. If I stayed at any second longer, I would have got run up on. Shoot. Why me? What happened to the other team? Did you guys already kill them or something? How did you guys do? There's no way. Is this guy okay? Whatever, I'll just take my, my victory and get out. So you were chilling up there the whole time while I was fighting and you decided to duck and weave and then your Wraith goes AFK? Well, I just griefed that team. I, I just, I'm so in shock. I need cells bad. I need resources. And the only thing you can really do is continue to just duck and weave and go in and out. Even if you kind of hot drop on this, you got to find where the opportunities were available. And that can be really difficult to essentially do, which is why, why I'm recording this is why I'm trying to make it as super clear as humanly possible. My so there's another team that is fighting on this side here. And now that I got the cells, I mean, ideally you want to have at least a battery and more in your inventory. But all you can really do is just do the best you can. And you'll get your damage as you get closer to end game because people are more in inclined to go into a poke battle. That's really, really key. The more you go into a poke battle, then your damage will go up. If you're doing these quick shots like you see and going to a fight and then backing out, your damage isn't necessarily going to be exactly high. That's not a bad thing. Just be very self-aware. That's what that is. Also, notice a glitch with Vantage. If she has her ult, they, you can see the line through the map. So another big tip if you have your ult, that it's, it calls like a big signal of where you're at. And there you go. See how it's moving? I don't know what that bug is. And I don't even think people are really aware of that. And that one kind of surprises me. So they were fighting here. Hit that guy. They're looking at somebody. And they have both have purple. Oh, hello. Nice to see you. Probably not going to stay here. What I might do is actually take the Wraith portal and just fly overhead and just take a big look around the the area. It's interesting. I say this is a hot drop. Is there a backpack in here? I thought I saw one. I don't even have a backpack. Wow, I'm in shambles. That's unfortunate. Okay, well, I got to get out. They're pushing me. They're pushing me. See, I told you. Backpack. Somebody's going to commentate and say your, your looting is horrible today. Yeah, it's a little rough, but it's okay. We're going in and out. This is I actually expected to hot drop and just kind of get pushed and shoved and die. I might actually get chased here. That's all. Yep, they're going to chase. What I'm going to do, usually if you get chased, the best thing you can do is just get involved with a whole nother team. So if I land right here and I use Vantage to go up, they can't necessarily... Let's see if they land on me. Oh shoot, I fell. I'm dead. That's oh god, oh, that's over. I'm dead. I'm dead, guys. This, there's no way I get out of this. I heard the shots in front of me. I'm so dead. And I'm probably running towards the shots. They are chasing super hard. I noticed a lot of people do this too. They've been chasing super hard. I've had, had people chase me across the map. And I'm like, wow, you guys are crazy. Like, you can't give me a break? There, there we go. Perfect. I got a debate actually right into it. That's crazy. This is why you shouldn't chase, especially if, like, I should have held top and been better at it, but, you know, hey, it is what it is. Now I can come right back and fight. I wonder if we even need to do a safe drop. I think, honestly, that I think, I think this is fine. I think I just, just so the video isn't long, I think this is more than enough tips. Just so it doesn't overstay its welcome. 
Because this is actually pretty solid. Even if I drop safe, it'd be the same uh, story, essentially. And just, oh, what? How did that not, how did that not count? All right, I'm out. Make sure they fight. Sorry, I didn't mean to be so shocked, but like, what? The other guys are over there with the vantage. Look at that, that's crazy. And this is a person I eliminated earlier that actually has amazing stuff. Very happy about that. I'm keeping one med kit for the shield. You're pushing me. Oh. Not the team down below, the one that I knocked. You're, you're gonna push me? Okay. And that's a confusing part. I don't know, it's so interesting, guys. It's so interesting. Like, this isn't a bad round. This is literally my first round of the day. I literally just hopped on, solo no fill. I'm on my lunch break. I just recorded the voiceover for the other stuff. And then this happens. This is, I'm, I'm probably dead. I don't think I get out of this. I need my Q again. They're pretty, they're pretty quick and they're pretty excited. I need the other team to, you know, kind of push them. Which I don't think they're going to do. I am gonna be blunt. I, I think that they, they want me dead for some reason. Even though there was a perfectly nice team located down below. The problem that I have is that if I turn and shoot those guys, and maybe this is just a King's Canyon problem. On World's Edge, I don't have this much of a problem. I find King's Canyon probably the most difficult to duck and weave just because there's so many teams nearby. And like we've called it every time that you're seeing it. Like I'm not, I hope I'm not crazy. I hope you guys don't think like I'm just playing scared. Like I stay, I get thirded. I, 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 don't, I don't know. Like I'm I'm playing it maybe a little safer than I normally do just because I want to survive for the video. So I don't embarrass myself too much. But still, it's a... Uh, there was a perfectly nice team located down below. Why not pick on them? All right, well, I'll duck and weave, go back and forth, go back and forth. Keep in mind that your loot will come from like eliminate, eliminating squads. Like, if your loot isn't good, it just means that you haven't killed a squad yet. Like, right now, my loot is like, I couldn't be happier. I'm great. This is great. It's a great loadout. I have in the description down below my loadout that I am running. I think there was one more in the building. I'm pretty sure. I saw it. It was a wraith. Castle. I don't know. Seven squads. Remember, if you just drop safer, the only thing I do, essentially. Look at that. No shot. That's crazy. I get landed on. Why? Why? What did I do? Like, I, I take some shots and you land on me? Go go fight the squad over there, please? How much do I have to beg? There you go. Thank you. And now I'm going to duck and weave and go right back. I whiffed. Everyone's shooting at me, even height. That's crazy. One more bullet. There's another guy on my right. That's crazy. I, I, what? Huh? What did I do? I don't understand. I don't deserve this. Watch me get shoved. It must be a high threat or something. They don't even have vantage to scan me out. All right, go back in. Maybe I'm just that much of a pest. This is crazy. I don't know. I'm just like, I'm, I'm just in shock, guys. I don't know what to say. I whiffed pretty hard the first two shots, so I'm crying. That's very unfortunate. Okay, this is team. That's the, look, the, they're up there. Oh, you know what is advantage? That's why, that's why they're singling me out so hard. They're like, is she solo? She's by herself. Go kill her. I'm like, no, please. I don't deserve this. I'm going to just rotate all the way around. I'm going to try to end up like all the way over here. Come on. Pop this. By the way, another tip if you haven't seen. You actually can pop alt excels even though your ult is uh, popped. You have to go in the inventory and seconds. click on it. If you know an alternative way, let me know. It's the only way I know how to do it though. So there's this team over here. This round is really long. I feel like I've done nothing but just run. 30 seconds Duck and, and we're weave. The ring echo. Okay. So this could cost me my life. We'll kind of see what I need to do. Are they further outside of zone? Honestly, I can't tell. 
I can't craft. I don't have the materials. Just gotta run forward. There's a team here. I just don't know where. And if they're gating me, I, I've lost, unfortunately. But the zone is going to hurt a lot. If I take the low ground here, let's take a look. Are they still camping up here? No. I hate to take the low ground, but the more logical spot, which, okay, okay, I was right. They're, they're over there shooting. I was right. That's good. It's good to know. See, if I went over there, I think I would have had a lower chance of survival. If I play here, I could probably duck and weave. Like, if you're playing the more safer route, now that I've kind of slowed down the game, it's going to watch my back. I have a feeling that there's going to be one team rotating late. I just don't know which one. What's the res in front of me? Man, I'm not gonna win that. They got gold and red. Recharging my shield. Almost one mag, one of them, but they had gold and red. I gotta book it. I just need to go to the other side. Maybe they'll leave me alone. You see how I said I thought a team was gonna rotate late and then they did? It's crazy. I had an ash. I'm surprised they didn't portal me. Alright, well I have to go over here to the right. There's probably two teams here and there might be another team over here on the far far right. I assume. I think they're probably playing it really, really safe. Hope I'm wrong so I can occupy this area and have this be mine. If I'm right, I'm most likely going to be dead here. We'll find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. Will Goku do the Kamehameha on Fortnite and do the gritty? Find out next time on Dragon Ball Apex 4. Alright, I'm sorry. That's, I'm done. I feel like I want to be there, but then I'll get gated. It's picking up somebody, but I don't see them. I feel like I'm going to get run up on. Because this is a very logical spot to hold. So I'm going to get run up on maybe if I'm more in the center. Hey, look, a box. Any more nades, any more nades. Uh, let's drop that, drop that. Okay. Nades are your friend. I don't run enough of them. I'm healing. Probably will carry the extra light. I saw somebody cross the way. All the way over there. Another team up there, so that's two accounted for. Now, I just need to make sure the third doesn't appear from over here. If the dirt third doesn't appear from over here, I should be good. Now, if it's a seer team, I'm just dead. So I'm going to gate this. This is going to be my gating spot. And then I pray the other teams fight. Because this is longer, I I, I know I said I was going to do a... I'm already in the next ring. A round that was safe, but I, I feel like this has kind of been a mix. Dude. You don't have a Valkyrie. There's no way you know I'm here, right? If you run up at me, that's 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 crazy. That's the team that's been hunting me all, all game. If they had a Valkyrie, I'd be dead. Are they going up again? What did I do? Do you not like me as a content creator? Also another tip, if you're looking at the mini map, if you know that it's not blinking, it means that you are in the zone, which is why I knew that it was in right there. I need for you guys to fight. This could be, I don't think this is gonna be a dub. There's no way. There's no way first game on that I get a dub. I'm not saying again, I'm second guessing myself. Heard the ambiance, it sounded like somebody's walking towards me. Fight! Oh my gosh, guys. I feel like I'm playing. This is you know how I said it feels like diamond? I've got a minute. This feels like diamond. This feels like the same level of like stuff I would run into diamond. Like the same the same stuff as you're just trying to like rat and like save your life. It's the same thing. Plat lobbies, I don't need to even need to do this. Like this is crazy. Rings near Echo. You've got 45 seconds to find a snack. They're running Newcastle and Vantage. They're hunkered down. Just kind of wait, kind of just chill and kind of vibe, you know? So how was your day today? Up. How are you guys doing? And hunker down. If I, you know, I wish I could be like, doesn't one of her emotes place like one of those wooden things? Do I have one of them? Too close to a wall. Okay. I can't, I can't cheer. I need to get more of her emotes. 
10 seconds to get in the ring echo all right well this is where all chaos kind of ensues there's one knock Let me wait for the best opportunity for this hold the rock right here work my way in Oh, you know what it is? You see echo through walls. See, that's more of a reason to hide it. I thought it was the old. Two enemy squads left. I'm not getting killed now. You got the armor swap. That's crazy. Found a whole squad myself. Me and Echo, of course. No, you guys have height. GG's. She wasted time. She got the armor swab, and I got it, and I probably shouldn't have gotten greedy for the Mastiff. I mean, the team was right there, but, you know, GG's. GG's. Not just the point, though, at all. That was, uh, I'm kind of surprised that went as well as it did. That was literally me hopping in during a lunch break, recording this, and I got already to do a second round. That's crazy. I, wow. Okay. Well, that wasn't half bad. I mean, that's generally how they go. You either get more unlucky or you get lucky and what happens with vantage what you can do compared to other legends treat it like a pathfinder you get into a fight you get out of a fight you get into a fight so what we learned i thought the old, the the bug had to do with the ult but it looks like if echoes out that you see that line which is crazy I feel that's pretty game breaking that's why i put echo away all the time like psh, that just screams your location all right well Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to wrap up the video here. I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out, for watching this video. Hopefully it was very helpful. Provided a lot of tips, a lot of thought process, and hopefully it helps you improve and up your game. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye, everybody.